Does being overweight or obese in midlife predict whether you're gonna have health problems or die younger or have increased morbidity as you age? Well, a new study published in JAMA Network Open seems to suggest that the answer is yes. Now, on the one hand, this seems like maybe, okay, obvious, you know, if you're, if you're overweight or obese, you're probably gonna have more health problems. But there's been some data to suggest that's not always the case. In fact, there is this what's called obesity paradox, um, the overweight paradox of people who are overweight actually live a little bit longer potentially in some studies. Now, we've talked about this before, and it's funny to use the term paradox and because it shows the assumption is that they're going to be you know, worse off from a health standpoint. You, we should fall back on data rather than assumptions. But the, the thing is that that doesn't always hold up. And that a lot of it has to do with body composition. Um, you can be... Um, overweight by BMI and have lean body mass and good physical activity scores and physical fitness. And you could be normal weight and have low lean body mass and poor uh, physical fitness activity scores and so forth. So there's more to it than just body mass index. Then there's this concept of health at any size that you can, that any size is healthy. I did another video about that. And I, I think you can be, you could potentially be healthy at any size, but that does not mean any size is healthy. And instead, we need to look at far more than just body mass index and look at you know um, lean muscle mass, visceral adipose, abdominal fat, and of course, metabolic health being so much more important than just size. But, okay, with all that as caveats in the run into the study, what they found was having a higher body mass index in midlife was associated with increased healthcare expenditures, increased morbidity um, as you age, and for those who are obese, uh, decreased longevity. So these are, are relatively important findings. Now, wasn't the highest quality of research, right? It was a prospective observational study, so there are lots of caveats. But for a study like this, that's as good as you're going to get. You're not going to get a good, you know, randomized controlled trial because because of how long this took. So let's look at some of the details. So this was a prospective study from Chicago, and it actually began in 1967. So they were enrolled between 1967 and 1973, and then followed up. Uh, between 1985 and 2015. So pretty long going study. And in the end, they had over 29,000 participants um, in the study for that long of, of follow-up, which is pretty impressive. So mean age was 40 and enrollment, 46% uh, in normal BMI, 40% were overweight, and about 12% had either uh, class one or class two obesity. Now, what they found was in terms of longevity, in terms of age of death, it was pretty much the same between the normal BMI and the overweight BMI. But for those who had obesity, and grade one or grade two obesity, their longevity was less. They died on average about two years sooner than those who were overweight or had um, a normal BMI. But even those who were overweight, even though their longevity was not decreased, their morbidity increased. They were more likely to suffer from medical, chronic medical conditions, which we call morbidity in, in the medical world, and their healthcare expenditure, the, the amount of money that they needed from healthcare to take care of them was much higher. So it, it does, on the one hand, sort of um, confirm, you could say, the, the overweight paradox, I, even though I hate that term, but just, just being overweight by itself does not necessarily decrease your longevity. But quality of life is also very important above and beyond just quantity of life. And even in those who are overweight, the quality of life decreased and healthcare expenditure increased. And then for those who were obese, their, their longevity decreased in addition to quality of life decreasing and expenditures decreasing. So what it shows is weight matters, okay? Then I guess on the one hand, that shouldn't be a surprise, but there is quite a, this debate about whether weight really matters. And, and look, body mass index is an incredibly crude tool that for the individual is almost meaningless, but for the general population can certainly pick up on trends and can be useful in studies like this. So, so the take home, I, I don't know, I guess the take home for me doesn't change a whole lot um, because still, if somebody has an elevated body weight or an elevated body mass index, you still want to know more information, right? If you can, you really want to know body composition. You want to know abdominal mass, abdominal fat, visceral adipose tissue. You want to know lean muscle mass, and you want to know that trend over time. You also want to know metabolic health because increased weight does not necessarily mean metabolic health dysfunction and metabolic dysfunction does not only happen in people who are overweight, but for people who are overweight, certainly if they have a, um, a waist to height um, ratio 
above 0.5, you really want to screen them um, for metabolic dysfunction and start lifestyle therapies to treat it as early as possible. So none of that changes based on this study, but what I think it does what does change is even if longevity is not affected, we still have to pay attention to quality of life and morbidity, and that does appear to be affected. Um, even with people who are who are only overweight and not obese. So really need to pay attention, still use weight as a metric, but use it as sort of the, the, the metric to open the door to finding out more information so we can learn how to treat people even better, how to take care of yourself even better. And that's why we have so much content at dietdoctor.com focusing on healthy weight loss, right? Not just weight loss, not just BMI, but healthy weight loss, which so many times involves higher protein diets, some form of resistance training, and learning to eat naturally satiating, pleasing, enjoyable foods um, that that take care of your hunger. So you're naturally eating fewer calories without having to count the calories and measure your macros and all that, but doing it in a way that preserves your lean mass, helps you lose fat mass, helps improve your metabolic health, right? Wrapping all this up into one and hopefully in a way where you don't have to obsess over it and think about it and make it the focus of your day. That's what we're trying to provide at, at dietdoctor.com. So if you want to know more about it, please visit us at dietdoctor.com. Take a look at some of our higher satiety uh, foods and meal plans. Um, take a look at our personalized meal planner. Um, and we're starting to have programs for people to go through to try out the higher satiety eating. So that's um, something we're getting started with now that we'll have more uh, in the near future. So please check that out to take advantage of it because I think it could really help people uh, find a lifestyle that works for them long-term. All right, thanks a lot, everybody. Uh, we'll see you next time here on Diet Doctor News on YouTube.